Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd. This is lesson number 28 from uh, the three fundamental uh, fundamental principles al usul al-thalatha. Inshallah today we'll be carrying on. This is uh you know the dealing, the last thing that we took was uh, the after the hijrah to Medina. This was in, was in the last lesson about the different uh, legislation that was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Medina up until the time of his death. And now, inshallah, we're going to deal with uh, the protection, uh, the things that, you know, after his death, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, وَهَذَا دِينُهُ لَا خَيْرَ إِلَى دَلَ الْأُمَّةَ عَلَيْهِ وَلَا شَرَّ إِلَى حَذَّرَهَا مِنْ وَلَا خَيْرَ الَّذِي دَلَّهَا عَلَيْهِ أَتَوْهِيدُ وَجَمِيعُ مَا يُحِبُّهُ اللَّهُ وَيَرَضَى وَشَرَّ الَّذِي حَذَّرَهَا مِنْ الشِّرْكُ وَجَمِيعُ مَا يَكْرَهُهُ الله ويأباه. بعثه الله إلى الناس كافة so there's no good in this life except for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He, you know, through the, through the, through his Sunnah and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala through his Quran and the understanding of the Quran that we got from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's no good in this world except for the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pointed us to that good. So if it's not mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah, and then it's not good. La khair. You know, because all, all the khair that we need to know as Muslims, as, as, as people on this earth, Living and just going through this journey that we're going through, which is just a small journey, just like the uh, just like uh, the Prophet sallallahu said to Ibn Umar, in the hadith of Ibn Umar رضي الله عنهما, which he said, you know, أخذ رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بمن كبي فقال كن في الدنيا كأنك غريب أو عابر السبيل, you know, stay in this in the life of this world like you're like you're a stranger or just somebody passing through. So I mean, uh, our time on this earth is is a very very short period of time. You know, so, and even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, well, Mali wa li dunya. You know, what, what, is, what is it, with, you know, between me and the dunya? What, what do I have with it, you know? And he mentioned, he said, You know, he said that he's like a, a person who sought shade underneath a tree and then he left it and went on. And so that, that period of time of just seeking that little, that little time of that period of time of just seeking that little, that little time of shade underneath the tree is like our time in this dunya. It's, it's very short. So the thing is that the, the, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this Quran and uh, on, the, on the tongue of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's given us every, everything that we need to know. All the good that we need to know in this life, to live this life in the way that we need to live it, and it's going to be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know everything we need to know. It's in the Quran and the Sunnah. We don't need to search and listen, you know, anywhere else. We don't need to talk to other religions and find out what they have in their books. You know, like you get some Muslims even reading books of Confucius and Buddhism and all, just trying to look for like other type. Akhi, if you don't find that guidance and, and, and even the type of stuff that you might find is correct, that you read from the Kufar and you see that it's correct, you find it in the Quran and the Sunnah. So why don't you, but see, that's the thing that people, they don't do that. They don't look for the guidance. It's like you're a Muslim, but you're not looking for guidance in the Quran and the Sunnah. Then you need to check that. You need to check yourself as far as your Islam. Go back and check your heart and really, really make a, a very, 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 like, uh, like, analyze your heart very carefully. Because if you're not trying to find the guidance, everything that you need to know in this life is, is in the Quran and the Sunnah, either directly or indirectly, but you can understand it if you, if you, if you seek that understanding. Hey, okay, like, for example, like, uh, like a lot of the things about goal setting and principles and all the stuff that you see the people like reading in management. If you want to read about management, you know, in leadership, who's the best example for that? You know, the the, man, the 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 best example was set by the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Can you find a better example? So all this stuff that they bring, all these qualities in a leader, and all these qualities of a good person, and all these you find that in the Sunnah. You find that even in Riyadh Salihin. If you just sit back and read just the first, like maybe the first ten to fifteen chapters of Riyadh Salihin, you see all of the. You know how the, the, the first half of Riyadh al-Salihin, it deals with like morals and manners. Morals and manners. So if, you, if a person were to just like sit back and memorize Riyadh al-Salihin and try his best to, to put that into practice on a daily basis, Alhamdulillah, how much good will come from a person from that, if that person just did that? So the thing is, is that, you know, all that we need is right here in this deen. Everything that we need. And that's why he said, well, هذا دينه لا خير إلا دل الأمة علي. So every single evil that we need to 
know to stay away from. And the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's warned the Ummah uh, from it you know, before his death. Well, khayr alladhi dallaha ali, a tawheed. And of course, the best of all good is, is tawheed. And everything that goes with the religion is tawheed. So everything, because all obedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is tawheed. So, and when we're not talking, we're not just talking about just to simply saying uh, tawheed, a shadow in la ilaha illallah, wa shadow na Muhammad Rasulullah as a statement, but we're talking about the lawazm that come with it. And obedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, obedience to His Messenger is a sign of your tawheed being correct and you being upright. Because if obviously, if you're sitting here saying that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah, and nobody has the right to be followed except for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but you're, you're obeying other than Allah. And you're following other than the messenger. You're following, you know, you go to like a lot of Muslims rooms and they got posters of basketball players and movie stars and musicians and stuff like this in the room. But yet they uh, profess to follow the, the, the messenger. So all of a sudden, ah, that's a person's a lie. He's lying to himself. This is not the following. This is not Tawheed. So you you haven't done the loazim. You haven't done all the, the requisites of this, of saying this word. And the requisites uh, which required of you as saying La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah is that you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger and the obedience takes precedence over every, the obedience of every everything from the creation. All right, the only person from amongst the creation whose obedience is absolute is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that's it. Everybody else, their obedience it has to, you know, is based on their ordering you to do something that's in line with the Quran and the Sunnah and not against it because uh, obviously, the Prophet وسلم, is only going to order you with obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all he ordered the people to. So we obey him outright. But everybody else, even from amongst the ulama, is, is you know, if they, are, if they tell us something that's from the Quran and the Sunnah, we listen and we take it. If they tell us something that's against the Quran and the Sunnah, we don't take it. And we don't, there's no obedience to anybody, whether he's an alim, he's a, from the scholars of Islam, or whether he's the ruler of a Muslim country. There's no obedience to the creation and the, and the disobedience to the creator. You know, la, so, la so this this is just, this is the reality. The only one that we obey from the creation outright is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and nobody else. Everybody else, you know, whatever they say, and they say you should do this, you have to do this, it goes back to the Quran and the Sunnah. And, you know, so so everything, so, and this is Tawheed. And this is the this is the understanding of Tawheed that the people need to have. If you haven't had this understanding from from, from at this point in this book, Allah Musta'an, and go back, you have to go back and listen to this again because this is Tawheed. All the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the obedience to his messenger, the following of his Quran and the following of his Sunnah, the implementation, the learning of these two books of, of the, the Quran and the Sunnah, these two things, and the teaching and the da'wah ilayhima, all of this is Tawheed. And this, of course, is the greatest of all good. And of course, everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and is pleased with is from the lawazim, is from the requisites of the kalimat of tawheed. Because everything from hajj and psalm and salah and all of these things that we have to do as Muslims, all of these are things that are required of us as Muslims by, by saying this word. So all of these things, these are actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with and, and staying away from that. shirk. Okay, and what's what is shirk? You know, it's it's taking something away from uh, you know taking and doing sarf al ibadah Allah the istihqa Allah ila ghayrilla. You know, so and of course the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa taala is the biggest. We obey Allah subhanahu wa taala, and this is tawheed, is obedience. So to obey shaitan or to obey the the people and something that's disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa taala is yeah, well now we start to follow in shirk. So this is how we fall into sins, and this is because even obedience to the nafs, over the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where we put the where the, we put the obedience to our own desires, over the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of these things we have to be careful because all of these are the doors that open up that doors, the door of shirk. You know, and the bid'ah and uh, you know, following the desires and all of these, they open those doors and they open them open them up wide, wide, wide. So Allah Musta'an, wa yaradha, wa shara ladhi hadaraha minna shirk wa jami'a ma yakrahu Allah wa ya'abah wa ba'athahu Allah ila nasi kafatan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all the people, kafatan, to every, to all the people, to every single race, to every tribe, to every, everybody. 
And this was the only messenger that was sent to all the people because every messenger that was sent before and every prophet was sent to a specified people. Even Isa alayhi salam was sent to Bani Israel. He was not sent to the Europeans. So that's why Christianity is not meant to be a European religion. And it was never a European religion. Isa alayhi salam did not speak English. All right, he's, you know, he's, from the, he's from Bani Israel. Bani Israel at the time at that time was in Sham, which was uh, now known as a, uh, you know, the area of Palestine, Syria, and all that. So that's that's those are the people that he was sent to. He was not sent to all of mankind. He was not sent to the Europeans. And this is uh, you know, what you see nowadays is Christianity is just a Roman Empire construct. It's a made-up religion that was based on you know the the beliefs of the Roman Empire at the time, where they started to include all of their beliefs into what was whatever le was left over at that time of the Christian religion. Because by the time that the, the Christian religion had made it to the Roman Empire, the original Injil, the original Gospels of Isa alayhi salam didn't even exist in their, in, their, in their original form. By that time, everything had been changed, had been translated to different languages, and, and, and they tried and attempted to translate it back to the original language of the, of the Injil, but they, they couldn't do it because a, a lot of that language didn't exist anymore. So everything, everything that you see is just a made-up false religion. Allahumma s'ta'am. So, uh, you know, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he came, he came with the final revelation and it's to all mankind. So everybody is obligatory upon them to believe in Islam before their deaths. Kafatin, waftara ta'atuhu ala jami'a thaqalain. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he made it an obligation. That the obedience to the Messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, it made it a, an a, obligation upon the two thaqalain, which are the two creation, the, the two people that are the two uh, creations that are mukallaf that have you know that are going to be answered that have to answer for their sins and those are the jinn and the ins and there is no third creation so anybody who uh says that you know aliens exist and that there's some type of uh there's some type of uh intelligent life form that that exists outside our life forms you know then they, you know this allah musta'an you know this this is a kufr and this is a very very dangerous Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he put two life forms on this earth that are, you know, that will bear the responsibility on the day of judgment. And those are the jinn and the, and the humans. And these are the two people that will be uh, held accountable for their sins on the day of judgment. So, uh, and as far as like uh, any other third life form, then, uh, you know, how now you're going to have an alien life form. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went and gave da'wah to the jinn. And he gave da'wah, obviously, to the humans. So now the people are going to say, well, you know, I guess he didn't do his job and he didn't give da'wah to the, to, to the aliens, you know, because the aliens, they don't, obviously don't know about Islam, do they? So this is kufr and this is a complete disbelief and it's not, we don't believe in aliens and nor is there any other third type of life form that exists that has intelligence. The only two intelligent life forms on this earth are the jinn and the, and, the, and the humans. And that's it. And these are the people that will be held responsible for their sins on the day of judgment. All the animals, they're غير مخلف. Because they, they don't have that intelligence. They don't have an aql. So they're not going to be held accountable for anything that they do. Because they're all acting in accordance with the, with the nature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created them upon. Their own fitrah. But as far as us, because we have that intelligence and that intelligence causes us to change that fitrah. Change it to the point where now you, you have atheists, you have uh, people, things that don't even agree with the fifth order, because even if you were to leave a child, you know, a child who has no religion or not raised up on religion, they'll, they'll recognize that there's something greater that's controlling everything, uh, you know, above us all. That this, this is not it, you know. And, you, you know, even us as children, we were not introduced to religion, but I remember just being as a child, Saying, yeah, there's a God and he's he's up, he's up way up there. You know, we even as children we used to point above the sky. You know, we used to always say that. You know, this was something that we just understood from from our nature. What and, and us, me, my sister, and all and we were never baptized as kids and we never went to church. So this is the nature of children. It's not the nature of a child to be an atheist. Because this atheism doesn't even make sense. Atheism to say that everything in this creation that, that functions in such order is by accident. And that there's no creator, but yet they can't even make a computer without a creator. They can't even make anything in this earth without having a, a an inventor. So, so how is this earth all going to come about by accident and without a creator? So all of this is foolish beliefs. And it goes against the fatra. And this is all because the people using that intelligence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them in the wrong way. So... Uh, 
uh, this is uh, Allah Musta'an. So for us, Alhamdulillah, our obedience is to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Our obedience is the Messenger, and we we try to our best to stay away from everything that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has forbidden from us, and from that is shirk. And what that means, our obedience is solely to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and His Messenger, solely. Even the, the you know our obedience to our parents, our obedience to authority, all of this falls under the, the you know those people calling us and making us do something that is in lines with the Quran and the Sunnah. Uh, even your parents, if they order you to do something that's outside, that's disobedience to Allah. There's no obedience to the parents and obedience uh, disobedience to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala.